first light's a little bit later this morning because of the clouds, but uh, we just got to where we can actually see, and I'm pretty sure I saw a whitetail buck at about 300 yards drop into this little canyon headed our direction, so the stoke is very, very high at the moment. That was close. That's a big buck. I'm sweating. <laughs> Me too. I don't think he locked us being behind him. That was the issue. We needed to hit him off. Yeah, but who would have known he was going to keep on cutting? Why would he not come into this st stinking drainage? He avoided it because he wanted to stay up high and cruise. Where's he going? We just had an epic chase after that buck. Got about 140 yards away and he ended up cornering us off and we were chasing him like at his rear and had to grunt at him hard and then snort wheeze him. And he looked at us but just didn't like it. I think we needed to be in front of him and we just couldn't make it happen. Big buck though. You might recognize this spot right here. This 
is the bed that I spotted that other deer out of the other day and tried to put the stalk on. And it's big, it's real big. It is very big. His antlers are like right here. Dude, there's like some really tucked away beds up in there too. Craziness ensues with like five minutes left in daylight. And the place that we thought deer might cross, but probably not, deer crossed and <laughs> saw a doe. Yep. And then my little Bucky had tried to stalk the other day. Right behind her. Right behind her, following her. She had a boyfriend. And then 
After that, for about 15 seconds, Tyler and I tried to decide what to do and decided that there's not a lot of time left and I made the call that I was gonna go down the hill and try to cut these deer off. They had disappeared right behind a little knoll. That was kind of the plan, is to make that happen. We figured they'd work their way up the drainage well. They stalled out and uh, actually we saw her right before you left. And she was in thick grass. And she low. finally come back, she was low, you took off. They stall out. Not sure if they saw one of us moving around. I was switching cameras. Casey was moving and jockeying for position to uh, get a shot. And they were just being real slow. And uh, ends up, I finally got some footage rolling. And I mean, I, I kept the kept flashing the decoy and he kept wanting to come at me, but he just kind of knew better and ended up getting downwind. I was trying to knock an arrow and get a shot last minute, so I yeah. lost him in the camera. We made the right call, it just didn't quite happen. Side, I can tell. He might be broke off.
you younger.
this and those situations, all the things that you should have done. And you look back and hindsight is 2020. We had a buck coming in and that was a big half rag, probably five year old, four year old. I don't know, I wasn't even looking at the body hardly, but he did have a big old noggin on him. Came right in to a grunt call. We saw him early this morning. I saw him through the binos and I said, Casey, let's try to grunt him, get him a couple grunts. Fog got real thick right after we grunted him and uh, he showed up, you know, 150 yards out, not long after that. Came on a dead beeline right to the tree. I really hoped he was gonna come to this trail at like three yards right here and, and I was gonna smoke him. But the wind suddenly died. We had like a real weird west wind for a second, then it died. He was like 25 yards. And as soon as the wind picked up back out of the southeast, he started coming again. And he just ended up going on a downwind trail of us and threw a bunch of stuff. If I had taken a chance and moved on, I probably could have shot him. But the issue is, when he was at like 25 yards, another buck appears in the fog at like 100 coming our way fast. And he's the same caliber deer with a full rack. Got a little greedy, didn't know what to do. I should've just made a move on this deer, but I had hoped that that buck coming behind him would distract him if he got close enough. He probably never got any closer than 40 yards or so from him. And the, this deer, the first deer never heard him, the half rack. So I let this deer get downwind of me without being able to adjust my position and square up on him to shoot. He looked up bounded off. I tried to make a play on him and whip around real quick and square up as he bounded off and hope I could get like a 25, 30 yard shot. I don't know, he kind of disappeared behind some limbs and stuff and I just wasn't able to get a shot. I couldn't see him when he actually stopped. I just pretty much gave up on everything and was very disappointed and probably didn't keep my composure very well. Should have just stayed really still, let the bucks ease off, but we kind of blew him out. Not my, my best shining moment, but we're sitting here making calls every 30 minutes or so, 20 minutes, and trying to see if something will appear out of the fog again. We're gonna hang in there until the rain gets a little too strong and then probably bail out and head back to Texas. Mm -hmm.